So you're following my online dating advice and you're finally getting consistent matches. And then you match with the one. She's beautiful. She's perfect. The banter's amazing. You're about to have a date and then all of a sudden, poof. She vanishes into thin air. You're not hearing back from her. What do you do? Ghosting and flaking are some of the most frustrating things that can happen in online dating and they do happen regardless of how good you get. It will happen sometimes. How do you deal with them? Well, I'm gonna show you right now an example of me dealing with an extreme ghosting situation and how I turn it around. Let's have a look. So quick background, matched with this girl on Hinge. She was very beautiful, had a good resume, and she was actually fun to banter with. We exchanged numbers, we're about to set up a date, and that's where we're gonna pick up the texting right now. So she texts me, I just got back to the city. Tomorrow's a bit tough, but I'm free Thursday and Friday. The weekend is a bit stacked after that. So I took about a day to respond, and I responded with, sorry for the late reply. Thursday seems promising. Are you free all day, or were you thinking more of an after work kind of thing? She responds, same day, no worries, I'm not the world's best texter to be honest, I should be free by evening. So at this point, we technically have a date. Now, I will let you know I've already made a mistake here. And the mistake that I made, it's a subtle one, and it's one you'll get away with most of the time, but what I did do is I made the plans only in text. I had only texted her online, I'm only texting her here in the, in the texting exchange. I never have called her, we've never talked personally. And it's harder to develop a good connection when it's just in text. In general, in online dating, I really do like to have a phone call. I find that the flake rate goes way, way, way down. And even beyond that, the girl usually just shows up for the date a lot more excited to see you if you've had a phone call first. So not only will you get flaked on less, but also the dates you go on will be much better. So I typically make it a policy to have a phone call before every date. However, in this case, I just took the date, I wanted to get you know, wanted to get it in this day, I had other things scheduled, et cetera, so I got lazy, I didn't do the call, and I just went with it, all right? But up to now, it does look good. It does seem like we have plans. So my next text, I go ahead and confirm and move things forward with, sounds good, keep me posted when you'll be done, but I make my own hours, so I'm fairly flexible. Looking forward to meeting you tomorrow. Seems pretty decent, it's not a terrible text, it's maybe not the greatest text ever, but what do I get? Absolute silence which is very frustrating since we had plans. And now we're leading up to the time of the date, getting closer and closer, and the question is, do you text or do you not text? And this is a critical point that a lot of guys mess up. A lot of guys, because they don't want to double text, they don't want to be needy, they actually just let it go all the way past the time of the date and don't text, which looks incredibly unentitled, and it also gives up whatever chance they have of actually getting the date right then and there. All right, there's a lot of reasons to text one more time, right? It's possible, unlikely but possible, that she never saw your text for whatever reason, right? Because she just, it got buried in some other stuff. It didn't send through. That's unlikely, but it does happen sometimes. Maybe she was going to respond to it and then she forgot or she thought she had responded to it. She didn't send a message. All kinds of things like that can happen. And also, maybe the girl's just hesitant and needs another reminder. Sending one more message before the time of massively increases the chances that you're going to have a date that night, obviously. Beyond that, if you don't, it's very awkward to text her afterwards, right? It's like we had plans, I didn't confirm the plans, and then afterwards I'm trying to follow up and make new plans. It's, it's, it's very weird. You're almost putting yourself in a situation to be a victim. You're almost putting yourself in a situation where you're making the girl maximally rude. You're basically making her no call, no show you. Whereas, you know, at least you give yourself a chance by sending one follow-up text. But in this situation where you do have plans but they're not confirmed leading up to the date, you absolutely should follow up and further confirm the plans, okay? Not doing that is a huge texting mistake. So I followed up coming up to the time when she'd be probably getting out of work and I said, dot, 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 any ETA on the unique and charming miss her name. I hope she hasn't been crushed under an avalanche of work. And that's a bit of a reference back to our previous conversation and that she's very busy and those kind of things and the fact that I know she's at work as well, right? And it is very plausible if maybe her workday went completely to shit and she got buried under a bunch of stuff or um, some calamity happened and she had to put out a bunch of fires, it does make sense that she might have gotten distracted and not responded to the text or it's possible she might have even just had her phone away from her, who knows, right? So I'm giving her a reminder, I'm giving her another chance. However, once again, she doesn't respond. I get silence a second time. So now fast forward, she hasn't responded, the time of the date has passed, I didn't send a follow-up follow-up message because that would be a little bit overkill. And now the time has passed, the flaking has happened, right? She ghosted me, she no call, no showed me. She's very rude, right? A lot of guys would get offended here and they start calling out her bad manners, 
saying that they deserve some respect for their time, all those kind of things. And while I, I feel for you, and while I do sort of agree with you, the fact of the matter is, number one, that's not going to be effective or productive. All it's going to do is going to make her not want to talk to you anymore. So it's not going to get anywhere. Also, in terms of being right, if you care about that, if you start being needy and bitchy and uh, whiny, she's only going to think she made a great decision by not showing up with you on the date anyway. So you're not going to win that argument, even if you're completely right, as far as that goes. Now, I'm sorry to break this to you, but she doesn't owe you anything yet. Technically, she doesn't even really owe you a response back. Now, it is good manners and good human courtesy to not no-call, no-show someone, but she certainly doesn't owe you a date. She doesn't owe you showing up, and it is very normal that girls will flake in various ways, right? Maybe they got nervous about seeing you, or maybe something else came up, or who knows. Until a girl's met you in person, we're talking online dating here, all she has from you is some pictures and a collection of texts. She doesn't know you yet, she doesn't owe you anything. Once you're actually dating her, then yes, she owes you a bit, right? You have an existing relationship. And by the way, the fact that she flakes on you early on in texting does not mean she'll be flaky with you once she becomes your girlfriend. It does not make her an unworthy woman, right? It's a very different situation. It's the, it's the difference between um, you not getting back to a stranger versus you not getting back to one of your best friends. Once someone's dating you, the relationship is fundamentally different, all right? So this is not a, a huge character flaw that she flaked. Now, no call, no show is rude, yes but calling it out is pointless. And calling it out and getting butthurt about it is counterproductive, okay? So I'm in a situation here where I want to give myself a good chance of things moving forward. I do want to, you know, not be a whiny, bitchy, little, needy person kissing her feet or trying to chase some girl that's flaked on me. I obviously don't want to do that, but I, I also can't get butthurt, right? So I just want to be as calm and collected as possible, move things forward in the best way possible. And full disclosure, at this point, the situation sucks, right? At this point, the situation is bad. I'm not going to say that you're always going to turn around these situations. All you can do is give yourself the best possible chance. So in this case, here's what I texted. Haha, ha, I usually never make plans via text. Thanks for reminding me why. And then upside down smiley face. If you'd like to do a quick phone call to see if the banter is good, let me know. We probably should have done that in the first place, laughing, crying. Okay, so let's break this down because this is a really interesting text. First of all, I start with haha, ha, right? Most guys that have just been flaked on and no call, no showed are not thinking it's funny, are not thinking it's amusing, right? But a guy who truly has options and has other things to do may well think it's amusing, may well think it's completely okay. So ha ha or LOL or something like that is actually fine in these kind of cases. Um, it, it does show that you're not saying it too seriously. I usually never make plans via text. Thanks for reminding me why. Um, upside down smiley face. Now here, I basically am calling out that something went awry and there was a fuck up in the communication, but I'm kind of blaming myself in a way. I'm not blaming myself as in I'm a bad person. I'm not blaming myself as in like um, I'm a loser or anything like that. I'm saying I should have followed my normal procedure. Silly me. I should have known better, right? I'm actually indicating that I have some dating experience. This isn't my first rodeo, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm not putting the blame on she's an awful person or I'm an awful person or something like that. I'm putting the blame on, oops, we messed up in the procedure of setting up the date. I'm calling it a miscommunication, not a fundamental personality flaw of either of ours. And that is very critical. Then I propose an actual solution. And I also am getting at the main, most likely reason why she would have flaked. Most likely reason she would have flaked is she liked me a bit, but she was actually nervous and didn't know me that well. Had she known me better, had we had more intimacy, more time together, she'd be less likely to flake, which is exactly what I told you before when I said that, you know, once she's your girlfriend, she probably won't flake even if she did flake initially, right? So I recognized an error, I corrected the error, and I gave a solution to the problem that doesn't make either one of us wrong, that's not awkward, that doesn't seem angry, that doesn't seem negative, and again, it solves her problem of lack of comfort and lack of knowing me. And they say we probably should have done that first place. And then laughing, crying. Again, I find the whole situation amusing. I find the whole situation okay. I'm not butthurt. I'm not angry. I'm not blaming her. I'm not saying how rude she was, etc. I am standing up for myself in the situation in that I'm not like, you know, saying, oh, sorry, I, I messed up or this or that or the other. However, even as I'm indicating that things went wrong, at all times, I'm still acting as though I am a cool, desirable guy and to assume that she still wants to see me, right? That's very critical in all of this. So did it work? Let's find out. Here's what she wrote back. Oh, and by the way, yes, she did write back. So she says, 
Hi, I really bungled this one. I was actually in the hospital yesterday and I'm just now catching up on messages. I pride myself on not being your token flaky New Yorker, but I straight up ghosted. I'm so sorry. So that's a pretty positive reply under the circumstances. And she's actually even taking responsibility and saying she's kind of sorry she did that, she ghosted, et cetera. It's funny when I don't actually put the blame on her and I don't actually get angry, she actually takes responsibility, right? I was a grown up and said, oh, I could have done things better. She's a grown up back and says she could have done things better. And now we are overall in a much better place. We're talking again, we're in agreement again. She just apologized. Obviously it's not as good as if we'd had the plans, but we're in a, a much better situation. We're kind of back again in the situation we were in before we made the plans in the first place. Now a quick note, Oftentimes girls will have excuses when things go wrong. And in my experience, the excuses you get are oftentimes, let's just say unlikely, in the sense that it does seem that girls have major life emergencies a lot more often than normal humans do when it comes time to scheduling dates. What I'm saying is this may be made up bullshit. Right? She may be lying. It may be that she wasn't in the hospital or wasn't sick or whatever catastrophe that happened didn't happen. But you know what? it doesn't really matter. If she's trying to save face, that's actually in a way kind of good for me. The fact that she cares enough to lie to me and cares enough to like try not to be at fault or not to be a bad person, that's actually overall net good for me. The fact of the matter is she didn't show up. The reason why she didn't show up, I really don't care. What I care about is how she's going to act from here forward. Are we gonna go on a date? Is she gonna be a stand-up person on that date? And is there gonna be a future possible, All right? So even if a girl makes up a bogus lie that you don't believe, please don't call her out on it and be like, you weren't in the hospital or you know whatever. And yes, when girls flake on you and give you excuses, there's gonna be far more dire life situations than could possibly have happened. Meaning a lot of the girls are full of <laughs> But again, you don't call them out on it because actually it would be low value to do so. If you said you're full of shit, you're lying to me, you actually just didn't want to hang out with me, that's a really low value way to think about the situation, right? So just take their shit at face value, understand that they're responding, which is good, they care enough to try and save face with you, which is good, and just go from there. So I responded, it's okay, I actually wasn't inconvenienced much, just confused, uh, but more importantly, are you okay? Hospital sounds serious, right? Which is what a normal human being would respond to a friend if their friend was in the hospital. Right? That's pretty normal. If it is a serious thing, you probably should treat it like it's a serious thing. Um, and she responds with, yes, I'm totally fine. I had a series of medical condition all day Thursday. Started with when I went running in the morning, figured it was just medical condition. Then it continued to happen that afternoon I went to the ER. I guess I had medical condition, AKA the opposite of condition I thought I had. So anyway, basically long-winded explanation of a bunch of like possible medical shit, whatever. And then she says, thanks for asking, exclamation mark. How can I make this up to you? Now we're in a good spot. And again, we're basically back in the same spot we were in before we made the plans in the first place, but she's definitely saying, I'd like to make this up to you. I'd like to make plans with you. And I've actually shown a lot of maturity. I've shown a lot of ability to handle myself in um, a bad situation. It's kind of like the equivalent to when you pass a shit test, you get more value. When you handle this situation, turn it around, you get more value from that as well. So I'm actually back in the same situation of scheduling plans, but I'm in a slightly different and better version of it than I was in the first time around. Also, in a sense, because she flaked the first time, she kind of owes me one and doesn't want to look bad. So she's actually a little less likely to flake the second time. But in any case, we've turned this around. We've gotten back to the place where we can start scheduling plans. But very importantly, we avoided several major pitfalls, right? We didn't skip texting when we were leading up to the plans. We didn't get angry and butthurt and blameful the day after and try and win the argument with her. Right? We didn't call out her potentially bullshit excuse about her health, which I mean, this one may be accurate, but again, in general, on average, girls' excuses are a little crazy and wild, so you know at least some of them are full of shit. We just move forward as a high value entitled guy who has a life. And by the way, this other thing about how I wasn't very inconvenienced, right? I have a life, I'm going about my life. Missing the date with her didn't devastate me. If anything, it gave me some extra time to do work or something like that, right? So the frame is really good. The way I'm conveying myself is really good. I seem calm under the circumstance, building actually a lot of value from what could otherwise have been a very negative situation. So I hope you enjoyed that breakdown and I hope you learned a little bit about how to turn around these flaking and ghosting situations because messaging in general is a huge part of online dating and unfortunately, flaking and ghosting is a part of messaging. It will happen regularly on the app and even off the app 
that girls will go silent, that girls will stop responding to you. How you turn that around and how you deal with that will make a dramatic impact in your results. Also, as a side note, the hotter the girl, the more attention she's getting on the app, the more likely she is to potentially go silent on you. So if you want the hottest girls, it's even more important. And messaging in general is such a critical skill that I feature two full weeks in my course, Online Dating Academy, specifically on messaging. There's a lot in there. You can check it out at the link below. Hopefully I will see you over there and hopefully I'll see you on the next video.